What's going on, guys? It's Cameron from Tinker's Musings here, and I know it's been a while. Happy New Year. Uh, I am back, and I am excited to, to I'm excited to debut this garage setup today with this video. And it's been something I've been working on the, the last few weeks here, trying to piece together different parts and recording equipment. I've got an audio interface. I have this microphone, obviously. I've got a couple of cameras, and I have a laptop that is doing all of the recording via OBS. If you're interested in more of that setup, I happen to do a video in the future talking about each individual component and kind of what I decided to do for the YouTube studio here in the garage. But all that said, let's get on to the subject for today's video. So today we're going to be talking about these Western digital, or not necessarily Western digital, but the HMSMR hard drives that you might see pop up on eBay every now and then, and why they're interesting and maybe a good maybe a good solution for you if you're looking at building out your storage rather cheaply. Note that these aren't going to be for everybody. They only work with specific operating systems. They're not going to be typically installed in like a Windows machine. I don't know if Windows Server supports these. I do know that Linux and the latest kernels does have support for HMSMR drives. And when we talk about HMSMR, what is HMSMR? So HMSMR stands for Post Managed Shingle Magnetic Recording. And when we talk about hard drive technology, shingle magnetic recording is generally when you write the data onto the platters in sort of a shingle pattern. And when you, we talk about host manage, it means that the operating system or the kernel is managing the rights to the drives rather than the drive firmware itself. So that's why these can be cheaper than your typical CMR or even your standard SMR type hard drives that are drive managed. Now, the same caveats apply with HMSMR as other SMR type hard drives. These are not for performance type applications. These will do best when you run them in maybe like a, an archiving sort of solution or for your media setup, if you've got a large media, home media server. Also, if you run a cryptocurrency like Chia, this is perfect for that sort of scenario because you're going to be writing to the drive once, most likely, unless you have to replot. And in that case, I would just say wipe the entire drive and create a new file system. Because really what you want is to not have, you just want to not have the problems with the performance of rewriting these disks, because they're just not going to hold up when you go write to an area that's already been written to. Now, what you need to make these work is a SAS HBA or a SATA HBA that has the instruction set or the firmware ca capable of writing to these drives. So we have these two ports, the SAS ports, that we can interface with. We can go direct to a backplane, or we can go to a SAS expander and then go from the SAS expander to the backplane. I got this Inspur branded card but it's it's got the lsi 9300 ai chipset so you have to flash the it mode firmware to this controller and then you're able to interface with these hmsmr discs these are sata interface but there should be uh i, I think there's a sas interface as well it just depends on the type of drive that you get. You can also get Western Digital or Seagate. There are some HBAs available from Adaptech that have 24 ports. And I tried playing with one of those a few months ago, but didn't have any success because I put the card in the system and nothing came up. I ended up returning that card. And then I just researched that all you need is like a basic SAS 3 HBA. You probably could get away with a 9400 or 9500 chipset if you 
have a mixture of SAS, SATA, and NVMe type drives in your system. Now, I will give a disclaimer. I only have SAS, so I cannot guarantee that these would be compatible with your system. So take that with a grain of salt. Only do it if you've got those controllers already within your system. So don't go out and buy a 9400 series card or 9500 series card unless you've already got one for your storage needs. I will say that these Inspur cards, I will leave a link down below in the description. These work wonderfully. I did try a 16 port card in one of my other systems. And unfortunately, maybe the firmware I, I flashed to it, it just doesn't seem to work with the uh, file system that I was looking for on these drives. Now, you can go with a couple of file systems. You can go with Flash 2 file system, or you can go to ButterFS. And I highly recommend using ButterFS because it's going to be a little bit more stable. F2FS was designed for zone storage devices like HMSMR or NVMe or SSDs type. But since this is a spinning disk, I don't I don't know if I trust it with the F2FS versus ButterFS. Get one of these controllers and then you'll be able to replicate this setup in your own machine. Then you can initialize ButterFS drives and make sure that they're zone storage aware. Once these are formatted as your file system of choice, ButterFS is mine, then you can put these into your FS tab and load them up just like you would regular, your regular uh, non-host managed drives. Then uh, you can either put them into like a, a merger FS, which is typically what I do, or you can mount them individually and access them individually. These are the HP G8, G9 style drive caddies, and they're fairly cheap on eBay, Amazon. I just bought enough so that I have enough sitting in the closet to pull out when I add new drives to my system. I don't like to have to wait for new caddies, so I've got enough that I, on hand. So yeah, we just install them like a regular drive. If you buy them from sellers, they should include screws, but otherwise they're just standard 3.5 inch hard drive screws. I will be installing into my ML350 PGA. And one thing to know about the ML350 PGA's is that they are capable of 18 drives if you source the drive cages. Note that the drive cages that are standard do not have SAS expanders built into them. And that was something that I really didn't know about. The ones that have SAS expanders built into them typically go for about, uh, I've seen them go as high as $1,000 per drive cage. I didn't even pay that much money for the server to begin with. So I'm not even going to go there. Just get the basic cages, if that's what you're doing, and go from there. Use the SAS expander like I did, and don't look back. So why consider these over just regular CMR drives? Well, the price, if it's right, then you might actually want to look at these instead of a CMR drive. Because you're going to get an additional five, four or five terabytes of space, depending on your price point. I bought these for 105 a piece, which is a steal in my opinion. And if you see them pop up at that price, snag them. Because you can't do better than that. You can barely get the 10 terabyte CMR type drives uh, for that, like the Seagate Exos or uh, you, the other drives that pop up every now and then. It, it's just crazy. Now I'm going to install these and we'll open up our terminal. So the 
These are hot swappable days, so it's fine if we install them all. The system's on. And then we're going to open up Windows Terminal and we'll take a look at how to initialize these drives and make them accessible for our data storage needs. This is the command that we need to run when we want to initialize ButterFS for HMSMR hard drives. We have to identify the drive letter, in this case it's SDK, and then give it a label. Since I already have five HMSMR drives in the system, I'm going to label this as HMSMR6. The dash F is not necessary unless you've already got a file system initialized. I usually put dash F on just to see. Be double sure that you've got the right drive letter. This will wipe out any file system on a drive if you not even if you've specified the force. So be careful. Okay, so that was relatively quick. Now we have a file system in FS tab, but I've actually just used drive letter. That's probably not the safest way to mount these up, but if someone else has a better idea of how to mount these drives, then that's I'm all ears for it. Now we gotta do the same thing for the other drives, so SDL. If you have multiple drives, just make sure you change the parameters, give them unique labels. Yeah. One thing to note is that you do need to have the pretty bleeding edge kernel. You also need to have new ButterFS tools. I'm not going to go into all specifics about getting that for your particular distro, but you should be able to follow some guide on how to install ButterFS programs for your particular distro. This is Proxmox 7.3. Your mileage will vary based on kind of what you're doing for your system. Now if we do an else block, we still see that SDK and SDL are not mounted. Like I said in a minute ago, there's probably a better way to do this than use the then use the drive letters. In typical file systems, you would take the UUID and use that to uniquely identify the drive and then load that up. First, we got to make a couple mount points. I just did six and seven here. So we do an ls on the mount directory. We should see all of our mount points. Okay. Drive one, two, and three, they're regular 14 terabyte SATA drives. There's nothing special about them. Okay. SDK. And then we'll do the same thing for uh, SDL. Now I use a merger file system that actually will concatenate a bunch of drives together as one large pool. And it doesn't actually matter the underlying file system on individual drives because really what it's doing is it's just creating a virtual drive that you can then save a file to and it will route the files to the appropriate drive based on the rules that you set up. So I've said a minimum free space of 101 gigabytes this is the Chia plot size. So we have to have at least 101 gigabytes before we attempt to copy to a drive. Now, in order to build up your pattern, you can list the drives explicitly. There is a way to also use pattern matching, but I prefer to use explicit naming. It does get a little bit long, but it does work.
And assuming we typed everything correctly, then we should have everything mount up. All right, we're hitting. We just mounted all the drives. Now, if we do a DFS-H, we should see all of the drives listed. The last two drives were SDK and SDL, and I love it because ButterFS, out of 13 terabytes, we only had 3.5 megabytes used just with a freshly formatted drive. So that's fantastic. I do have a lot of plotting to do with Chia. Now I have like 64 terabytes. I just doubled my terabytes free on this system. I'm debating on whether I plot up with the existing plotter that I have or wait for GPU plotting because it is going to be some rework, but there is lost opportunity if I wait until GPU plotting becomes available. So going to be thinking about that. It really depends on how fast one can plot up if you are going to use GPU or CPU plotting. I've got a quad socket CPU plotter that can do 16 minute plots, but I've been told that GPU plotting with Chia is going to be significantly faster and it will use less power overall because we don't have to use so many watts for such a long period of time to plot these things up. But uh, that's pretty much it. So you buy these drives, they're not always available. I see them between $105 up to $125. I wouldn't do anything more than $125 for an HMS SMR, honestly. Because once you start crossing it beyond that, we're looking at, you know, we're looking at the same cost of a CMR type drive, and then you don't have to have these special SAS controllers. CMR and Drive managed drives are going to be simpler to set up, but there will be a little more premium. For me, this was incredibly cheap. I got several of these drives for less than I would with CMR, and I'm I'm happy. I, the performance is really spot on when you're filling these up. I didn't notice any issues with bottlenecking on copying files across the network. I do also have 40 gigabit networking across all my servers, so that could play a factor into this. But at the end of the day, decide on what you want to do. HMSMR drives are probably going to be harder to resell, but if you are looking at bulk data storage for a long time, this is a great option for cheap storage for long-term archiving of data. Maybe you're a data hoarder, maybe you like to preserve collections of things. This is perfect for that type of use case. You're going to get a lot more density than you would with the 10 terabyte drives or even some of the 12s for about the same price. You get a couple extra terabytes per drive, and that really does add up after a time. Well, guys, that will do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that this new setup is a good way to kick, kick off the new year and if you have any suggestions on improving the audio quality or you know the camera angles lighting whatever i'm open to them because i'm really i'm learning as i go here and i would like to improve with each of my videos and make them interesting for you so that you can watch them and get something new out of them i hope you enjoyed if you liked the video please hit that like button and it would really help us if you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you can know about the next video. All right. Well, we'll talk to you guys later. See you next time.